everybody, Patrick Connor here. Welcome back to the Knuckles and Gloves podcast. Almost speechless. I mean, I'm almost, I'm never going to be actually speechless. Come on, but I got shit to say. But that's because the last week, dude, we already did a recap of this past earlier week. But I'm almost speechless from this welterweight situation we find ourselves in, Eris, Pina, my homeboy, CompuBox operator, and whatnot. How are you doing, number one? And number two, what the hell with these welterweights, bro? Man, what a crazy week that was last week. Just this welterweight. Just just the one. What the hell with that one welterweight? We're watching greatness ahead of us, bro. Wow. You know, like we've been we've been waiting for that one guy that we can tell our grandkids about. And yeah, there there was Floyd for that decade. You know, that definitely will be brought up in others. But in terms of like that one talent now, my god, man, Crawford is insane. What a what a what an incredible performance, man! Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. What else could you say that like that was just flawless? That was literally a perfect, you know, what what do they call it? Baseball, a, a no hitter or something? And like, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. that was that, or like in basketball, that was his equivalent of um Will Chamberlain scoring a hundred points. He just you know, goes straight for the Mortal Kombat and the flawless victory. Absolutely, it's, absolutely, and like, that's he, really what it was. What a fighter. Yeah, man. You know, so this past weekend, for anybody who's living under a fucking rock, if you're a boxing fan, what's wrong with you? Go back, watch it, do what you got to do. But Terrence Crawford met up with Errol Spence this past Saturday. Thought it was a 50-50 kind of fight. I mean, we previewed it. We talked about it. We both felt, you know, we we both leaned to toward Terrence Crawford, but I think we also both, I won't speak for you, but I think that we were of the same mind that we just felt like it really could go either way. Yeah, and, I mean, actually, Pat, you're the one who predicted the stoppage. I wasn't even sure if Crawford was going to be able to stop him or not. I thought, I thought it would be like a late type of thing, too. Like, it'd be a struggle, a back and forth, rah, and then, yeah, you know, yeah. and I never Crawford thought pulls away at the end. I never thought that laid out or, like, really stopped. I thought it was going to be a guy that's just, you know, accumulation kind of. Well, I mean, yeah. it was an accumulation. After a struggle. Was, after yes, a, after, after a close yes. fight, you know what after I mean? Exactly. That's what I thought. And, I mean, I... I don't have any explanation. I'm definitely not going to be bad talking to Errol Spence, needless to say. Uh, But we both lean toward Crawford. Doesn't make us fucking Nostradamus, Mother Teresa, or any of that shit. But, I mean, you know, it it was a 50-50 kind of fight, I think. Um, It was just that there are going to be a lot of people downplaying Spence for various reasons. But I think the track record is pretty clear. We obviously brought up the possibility of the accident, blah, blah, blah. But what a performance, dude. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, what any, Regardless of any of the circumstances with Spence, Terrence Crawford stepped up, like really stepped up, showed a kind of class and just control that, that we'd seen long glimpses of before, but really just not this kind of performance. This was definitely, you know, borderline career defining performance type of performance. It was, it was amazing. Oh man, I mean, if he ever, if he even surpasses this one day in another super fight, then I mean, my God, because you can retire on this one, and this will be talked about for the rest of his life, and for even more so on after that. You know what I mean? It was that type of performance. All the greats have that one in them that they just, you know, they could pull it out, and that that one of their careers is like either defined by that victory or a couple of victories similar to that. You know what I mean? You have Sugar Ray Leonard where his career is defined by his victories over um, making Roberto Durant quit, rallying to stop Tommy Hearns, and upsetting Marvin Hagler. You know what I mean? Um, In all three of those fights, I'm not sure you could say he put on the performance that Crawford did. Like, he put on an incredible performance, but not like that level of dominance, you know? and. And you could say that the guys that Leonard beat clearly were, you know, a higher caliber than Spence, even though Spence is an elite fighter. But I'm just saying in general, like Crawford just put on that, like, the type of performance where you're in a big super fight, like you said, it's supposed to be 50-50. It's supposed to take some punishment, go through a little bit of... Surgical. Um, clinical. Yeah. You know, just thorough. Absolutely. Ugh. Like, he he made it look like that Spence had no business being in the ring. And Spence tried. Spence definitely tried, and he landed some punches that would definitely do damage to any other welterweight on the planet, if not any, you know, higher divisions. Like, he was throwing a lot, and he was doing his best. He just couldn't do anything with Crawford, you know what I mean? From the from the very first round, Crawford just knew his distance and was just using that beautiful jab of his, you know, bouncing off of Spence's face, and he had such proper distance that he knew 
right where his feet were, that Spence's jab wasn't going to be able to reach him. And he was still just being able to do that. And then when they moved on the inside, when Spence is usually strong, Crawford was stronger than him. Crawford was able to bully him and move him around. And that wrestling um, experience that he's had in the past always works to his advantage too because he knows how to maneuver these guys and do what he wants, you know, and put them into position for himself so he can take them out. And then, like, you know, look at round two where that completely, like, the tone of the fight where you knew where it was going, it kind of reminded me slightly of um, Tank and Ryan. Because I would say Spence probably won the first round just on activity alone. You know what I mean? Yeah, you were, you're not alone. Yeah, I, I, that's what I kind of felt I saw more of, you know, on social media was that most people thought Spence took that first round. And hey, yeah, it wasn't a it's dominant a round by Spence, but that's cool. Round. Exactly. It was a feeling out round. Yeah. Crawford really didn't do much. He was just studying him and see what he had in front of him. And Spence was just a little bit more active. Yeah. He didn't <clears> really <throat> land anything of note, didn't really do anything, but just on activity alone, he probably edged it. No big deal. Crawford's done that many times in the past. But round two, same thing. Spence is coming out and still being a little more aggressive and trying to take command of it. Crawford's still, you know, watching, watching. Then finally he finds open and pop with that jab. Down goes Spence. And the tone of the fight right there was changed at that moment. Yeah, that was it it was really amazing how how fast, you know, how quickly everything changed. Um <clears throat> first of all. I should also feel I feel somewhat obligated to say that I caught the fight on PPV.com, which they're not paying me to say this. It's I'm just saying it's a really good source uh, for anybody who is looking to buy pay-per-view fights and interact with fans and stuff like that or not interact with fans. You can hook it up to your TV, etc. But uh, I caught it there and it was a lot of fun, as it always is. Um, and that being said there was a whole lot of buildup. Uh, I did see comments leading up to the fight. We kind of talked about this on the preview episode as well. Uh, comments of people saying, oh, like, where's the, there's no buzz for this fight. There's no buildup. Um, I thought that there was buzz and buildup. I thought that there was a lot of buzz, especially within the boxing community. And at this point, it's like, what are you expecting? You know what I mean? Like, what are we expecting as far as jumping outside of the boxing community? It doesn't happen that often anymore. You know, it just doesn't. And so expecting some massive thing is kind of like, I don't know what you're thinking, but there was buzz. And also on top of that, it did seem like a really short uh, time for promotion, uh, you know, relative to what we usually see for like really big fights. Usually we see like several months or something like that. And this one was only like maybe about two, two and a half. So that's a pretty short turnaround time for a, for a very major fight whatever it ain't on me to promote so i'm not making excuses for anybody i don't care but i just felt like that was kind of a weird you know outlook to have on it where's the buzz it's not a big fight it seemed like a real big fight to me and it seemed like the atmosphere there for the fight was really good there were a lot of people for the weigh in a lot of people seemed to have a lot of fun on you know vegas fight weekend um so yeah there was a lot of build up i did definitely get the kind of big fight feel like, like you were talking about when the fight was starting and it was like, you know, start getting jittery, start getting like, oh, all right. All right, man, it's happening. It's happening. And a lot of people felt that way, too, like because there was so much build up and uh, we were waiting for this fight to get made that I'm not believing it till they get in the ring. It's type of thing. Anyway. Yeah, that that kind of I feel like led also to that first round where there is a lot of tension. Neither of them are really opening up except for with their jab. Uh, Errol Spence is, you know, has a really good southpaw jab. And then Terrence Crawford himself was countering, like I had said in the preview, uh, Terrence Crawford kind of taking away that southpaw advantage, coming out southpaw himself, and then controlling the fight with his jab. I don't know that I've seen a harder southpaw jab at welterweight. I mean, that was some punishing shit. Uh, even from the end of the first round on, although, you know, it, it was some jockeying. But from that second round, that jab was really what was setting everything up, man. And so not to it's take away. Lamb rod, isn't it? Oh, brutal. Dude, he throws it, man. And sometimes nasty. he kind of makes it into like a hook too, sort of like that's it's really nasty. Like you've seen sometimes where where a fighter comes down with their jab and they kind of, you know, like snap it like forward and down. Yes. He yeah. was doing that shit too. It was bad, dude. And not to take away from Terrence Crawford's moment at all this week. But we saw between Naoya and Nue and Terrence Crawford, it's like just guys, young fighters, practice your jab, practice bringing it back, practice your footwork jab, bringing it back. Just like those simple things, dude. 
forget all well, the other nonsense. Always said it's the most important punch in boxing. If you really have a masterful jab and know how to use it, then it can work wonders for you. You know, absolute wonders. And trying to box a guy like you know Crawford, what Spence was trying to do, he he really just had no answers. You know what I mean? Like Crawford clearly was like three steps ahead of him in every direction, especially when it came to like thinking. It was almost like Harper just knew exactly what he was going to do. Everything was about to happen. And he was just able to counter it and come right ahead and just, you know, take advantage of it. Um, it, it was in each round, it got just like a little bit more, like a little bit more brutal, so to speak. Like, for instance, you and I were talking about this before round five started, in between rounds, round four, round five, right before the fifth round started. The ringside doctor came into the ring and asked um, Spence if he was okay. That's insane. What? Like, but like, but remember, like he like they were just about to start, and he was like, "Hold yeah. on," and like yeah. stopped the action and was like, and then, "Come like, here." The whole like, do you know? Let me check yeah, this. Hold like in here, and let me look at your face. Stopped the, the action and was like, "Come back over here," you know, look at my face. And even Spence was kind of giving him a look, like, "Oh shit," because yeah. yeah, dude, my wife yeah. is over yeah. here going, "Oh my god," you know, and I'm sitting here going, "Dude, four rounds in, they're calling the doctor." Ooh. No, that's not I mean, good. Very, very rarely does that ever happen. It'll happen if there's a cut, obviously, you know, that, you know or like some kind of crazy swelling or whatever. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or like if a guy gets heavily knocked down where they clearly don't know where where the hell they are, that, that happens. But just like for a sustained like four rounds of like a straight up beating where like that, I mean, in a big fight, it's very rare. Like I think the last time I could recall anything even remotely close happening would be like, an Ike Corte title defense in the early 90s against some hapless foe or something to that effect. You know what I mean? Like a routine title defense, not again, not in a giant super yeah. fight like this. That was, that was, yeah. Yeah, man, you know, that's one of those performances that it's going to hold time on its own. And we'll see, because Crawford is 35. Like, he's, so he's not a spring chicken. He's still in his prime, if not slightly past it. But, like, he's still clearly at his element and like he's not slowing down right now like he's barely taken any punishment in his career um he still feels like he has a lot to prove and now that he's the undisputed welterweight champion i'm god knows where he thinks where he's gonna want to go like from this but it's like he could yeah. make a few more years easily i'm sure yeah man i mean <clears throat> i guess just to complete the description for anybody who didn't watch it or is oh, waiting yeah. for the you know sake of completion here yeah, uh, just it, it. nothing changed as far as the momentum. I mean, and I mean, really nothing changed. That's what was really surprising. You mentioned it earlier. A little bit worse. It, I think it was around five or six, but there was a left hand that Errol Spence landed that was like, yes. it was stiff. And and you could see it kind of stood butt up for a second. And well, just for a, that was round five. That was it, round five. Just for a split second, I was like, hey. but then Bud was like, no, 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 no. And I, and when that happened, I was like, oh, ho, 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 ho. this is gonna get so so Maybe ugly. Right. Yeah, it, it it was it was apparent that it, it was gonna get really ugly. That was the best punch he could have landed in the fight. And it was that was a huge left hand by Spencer. It was an overhand left, and Crawford just took it and immediately came back to counter. I think it was like with a right hook or whatever. And Spence it almost looked grazing because of how fast he kind of reacted with it, but it bounced off his head and Spence went down. And then sooner, I'm sure, another round or two after that, he got dropped again, like, really heavily. And it, it was just a sustained beating. Like, his face physically just showed the work it, on it. It could have it been stopped long. a few rounds earlier. It like, probably, it really could have. It probably should have. Because, I mean, I understand Spence is a world champion. This is a huge fight. You want to give him every opportunity. Uh, totally. shadow the Gallows. Like, when there's really no hope and a guy is just getting pummeled the way he is, why keep on letting him get um, beat down like that? And especially like Spence has eye issues. Um, he's been in an active, he has other stuff. Like, is it really yep. necessary to let him take a number more of a prolonged game than what was going I was back? I was just gonna say, and not even joking, like not trying to make a snarky remark or anything, but he literally looked like he like just after the car accident. That's what yeah, he looked yeah. like. He looked fucked up. He looked like he got put through it, dude. And I mean, that's not good. I don't wanna see, you know, I don't wanna see a fighter get just hammered you know like that and so it probably could have been i get it though <laughs> I, I do but it probably could have been stopped a couple rounds earlier but in in any case you know he really started getting dinged around in the eighth and ninth round they stop it in mid ninth round uh and and he even protested it he was looking at the ref like what what you're stopping it 
man, he, he was he was getting beaten on real bad, real real bad. Um, but yeah, dude, like to where just circling back to where you were talking about, you know, and and what this looks like for Terrence Crawford and his career, and I, he's thirty five, but he definitely clearly showed no sign of slowing or. He didn't look bad. He didn't look like he was struggling with uh, – it. they were talking about – somebody was talking about he was having trouble making weight. I have no no clue how uh, true that is, but – Who's that? Spencer Pro- uh, Crawford. Crawford, supposedly. I don't even know if that's true. Oh, you know what it is? I remember that. It was because of the photos that you see. Everybody always looks a little drained when they're making weight. Yeah, I mean, they're making weight. He's going to, you know, Spencer in six. <laughs> but he's 35. I, at this point, I wouldn't expect it to just like, it's not going to overnight. Oh no, he's a middleweight now. I don't think so. So, I mean, but it, there are some intriguing options with Charlo it, it being the, uh, Jamel Charlo being the undisputed 130, or I'm sorry, 154 pound champion, obviously, but he's tied up with Canelo. I, that's kind of a strange situation now, but regardless, I mean, it's, they both deserve a break. Crawford and Spence deserve a break. However, I don't know because it doesn't seem like Crawford is super interested in just like slowing down or stopping. So I don't know. This is the momentum he's wanted in his career. Like finally to be at that pinnacle where everyone has to consider him the best in the world. Like he was considered that before, but there was still detractors and naysayers because Spence was still there and he was making weird business decisions after, um, after, uh, you know, bolting from top rank. Um, especially when late last year, when it looked like the fight was going to get made and then it looked like it was Crawford's fight, uh, Crawford's fight, Crawford's fault and why it fell apart. At least that was a narrative I saw, you know, online and other stuff. And then Crawford ends up on Black Prime <laughs> fighting. Um, well, and look at our, look, and I was fight. among the detractors. So look at my I stupid ass now. I you get know? it. So was I. I mean, it, you know, it looked really weird that he was fighting on some off brand pay-per-view, whatever the hell that was. You know, something the can, opponent it's kind yeah. of subpar, not awful, but subpar. The glove situation, the glove which situation. was a nightmare. It was just an absolute fiasco from top to bottom. And everyone, <laughs> it was easy to make fun of Crawford at that point because you're like, what kind of business decisions is he doing? What is this? What is that? He's just going to waste his career on the vine and do nothing until he's going to be wasted and this fight's never going to be made. Look at what's happened now in the nine months since then. Like, it's crazy. Well, yeah. he stayed fresh, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Say the least. <laughs> now he's at the top of the world. You know, if you look at it, it's him in, in a way. You can either make them 1A or 1B, whatever way you want to flip it. I'm not going to argue either way with him, however, you, however you want to look at that. And, um, man, you know, I don't know if he has to stay at welterweight. Like Spence says he's going to exercise his claw for, claws for a rematch, which I think is insane. But, you know, I'm, you know he's a proud guy. And proud fighters who take a beating of that always feel like they need to get some get back. And for whatever reason, okay, something happened in camp. I was struggling with this. I did that. Whatever. He, I mean, to Spence's credit, he didn't make an excuse. He said, you know, that Crawford was the better man that night. And he just took advantage of it and got the better of me. That was great. But internally, you know, he's thinking, I had this going on. I had that. And, like, I know I can, like, do better in that rematch. Yeah. And I'm sure he might perform a little bit better. Like Shane Mosley, for instance. Mosley got whooped by Vernon Forrest in that first fight. Immediately took a rematch uh, to try to win back the belt, even though people didn't, you know, because it was such a one-sided first fight that you didn't really care to see a rematch. Or the same thing with, like, Winky Wright. Then, uh, to Shane's credit, he did perform better in each rematch, even though he still ended up losing. So I can see it happening in Spence. And, and I bring this up semi-frequently just because it's something that gets brought up so often by combat sports fans where somebody's like, you know, oh, he said he's the best in the world. What the fuck? And it's like, what do you expect a fighter to fucking say or think, bro? You know, like uh, top level athletes and fighters believe in themselves a lot. Like, you know, I'm sure they do have also self-doubts, but they believe in themselves and their abilities on a different level than what we as normal schlubs understand. So, of course, you know, I, I definitely believe that Errol Spence believes he'd do better in a rematch. Would he? I don't believe so. And, and honestly, the statistics for most big fight rematches bear that out. Usually a, in big fight rematches, you get the same result except amplified. So, you know, if that were to bear out here, Crawford would just stop him sooner. 
if, is, you know, the whole point with that. Is that what would happen? I don't know. Of course, I don't know. How could, that's why they fight. Nonetheless, of course, Spence believes, believes in himself. And if he wants to go for the rematch, he deserves to go for the rematch. Would I advise it if I were an advisor? Fuck no, dude. Take a break, buddy. Like, you know, I care about you as a fighter and as a person. Take a break. And Terrence Crawford looked so flawless in that fight that I just don't know, like, what Spence does. The speed difference, that's also what I didn't say earlier. The speed difference was so big. It, that's what kind of was shocked to me. I mean, I know I knew there was going to be a speed difference. We mentioned that on the preview. I just didn't realize it was going to be like that. Like, you know, Crawford, I, I don't even like using this term because they've overused it for fucking Lomachenko, but he's in oh, the Matrix, no. bro. I'm sorry. I I know. I'm sorry. I, I can't. He was he was in the zone. Uh, All right, cool. Fine. He was in the I zone. I was really avoiding trying to use that shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the zone. He, he was in the he, he was in a he was on another plane. He's in the zone. Yeah, yeah. All right. He's Bobby Fisher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, Isaiah Thomas. I don't know. He's somebody. But but he I mean, was you know, using the chess analogy that you can put that right there, bro. He was definitely just in he's that Kasparov. He's fucking yeah. something. But I but mean, yeah, it, it was thought, thought, thought wise. That's such a brilliant fighter when you just can pick. What someone's gonna do and already know it, like already like two paces ahead, and just be able to counter on that. That's human. That's chess. That's human chess. Yeah. It was oh, surprising. Right. I didn't expect that. And you know, I, I can be considered like our friend, um, longtime friend of the show, uh, Reggie Dunlap said on Twitter recently. He's one of those old school fans that will complain about you know it was better in my day. I, I'm guilty for that too. I'm sure all of totally. us are. You know what I mean? But Crawford, I will have to say. To his credit, is one of those guys. I, I think he could have competed in any era. Um, whether he would have had the same success, I can't tell you. But he absolutely could have competed in the Four Kings era and been very successful there. Um, probably would have dominated in the Curry era. I mean, Herman Curry would have been fascinating to see as a fight. Like, yeah, I don't think Curry had the chin, but yeah. but that would have been a that would have been like a twitchy speed fest for sure. That would have been a really good fight for a few rounds because Curry was pretty awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then even hell, you know, the Annapolis era, he definitely would have been thriving in as well. In fact, that I, I you know, as much as I love Annapolis with his face, the way it'd be busted up or like that, I think Crawford would have a really good chance of beating him. And you can even say go back to the Jesus Christ and even say it, the Sugar Ray Robinson era that Crawford would probably be well involved in two he's just that type of fighter you know what i mean the things that he does you don't see normal fighters do like guys like old school trainers that have passed away decades ago like eddie fudge and um other old you know ray arcel or you know guys who have passed away only past, like other legendary trainers like george benton and other past trainers they would have marveled at crawford and, and talked about you know how the stuff he was doing the old timers were doing 40 50 60 70 80 years ago you know what i mean like right He's, he's that type of fighter. And it's beautiful to watch. And and I mean, we do obviously have the benefit of like decades of video and research. Of yeah, and more, yes, 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 absolutely. But still, even so, uh, you know, we have people. Uh, there's there's that dude like Miguel Class, you know, on on Twitter. There's a number of, of other uh, people who do like breakdowns and technical breakdowns, and I don't like all of them not the people, the breakdowns. <laughs> well, I probably don't fucking like all the people either, but nonetheless, like, you know, I don't like all of the breakdowns, but I'll watch them sometimes. And sometimes I'm like, Oh, you know, I definitely didn't catch that shit. That's, that's, you know, smooth as fuck, or that's a good eye. And, right. uh, you know, Crawford is one of those fighters where you could see there's a lot kind of like a subtle stuff that he does, especially with footwork and distance and stuff like that. There've already been a number of breakdowns. You know, those those old trainers would love that kind of shit. That's what they were doing with that film. That's why they had all those films and the fighters watching films and shit like that. So they can try those things in the ring. Of course, you know, uh, I I don't disagree with Terrence Crawford, you know, being a throwback type of fighter or being the kind of fighter who could uh, compete in just about any era. I'm sure he could. The only time you're really getting into weird shit is when you're getting into like the 45 round era and shit like that when it's like, eh, you know, those are different I'm kind of talking, human I'm beings. I'm not talking about Crawford fighting Barbados, Joe Walcard, and yeah, those are just, with all due respect, yeah. different kinds of human beings. Like it's they were 
people don't know about fighting for an hour and a half these days. You know what I'm saying? Like, and weighing in that morning and fighting for an hour and a half. People don't know about that shit. But regardless. Yeah, the guy like the Barbados Joe Walcott, who was barely five foot or like five one, whatever he was, just a little stub of a human. Knocking out Joe Koyansky. Straight up heavyweights. And calling out Jim Corbett. And Corbett legitimately being scared of him. Yeah, knocking out Joe Koyansky. And then like the next year, Joe Koyansky knocks out Jack Johnson. It's like whoa okay <laughs> how does that work and then you see that they you know that that amazing video which i think is the only one that exists of um barbados joe of um when he was uh when he was a custodian at madison square garden yeah yeah and they interview him and they interview him yeah and he was like you all saw what i did kowinski he was like i'm pretty sure i would have done that's corbett <laughs> <laughs> It was just cool to see, you know what I mean? But like, I think you might, yeah, have guys played. like that. They were just, they were just probably uh, not that. Not, I mean, skill wise, obviously, it's just two. It's just like you said, it's almost two different worlds at that point. But if you want to put Crawford from like you know the eras of like the the Charlie Burleys and like you know the guys like that with Sherry Robinson era, where Robinson, you had him and like you know Fritzy Zivic and Tommy Bell and Kid Gavilan and so many, you know welterweight um contenders around that time um yes he he fits in well with any era i think again yeah not to say he's gonna be a dominant all-time great and all those because those are varying levels and there was a lot of fucking talent and competition back then so i mean crawford definitely would have taken some else somewhere yeah. but like say he would have been competitive not nah, he definitely would have been a top contender anywhere anytime any place and that's the highest compliment i can give anyone and the only thing that he's really missing uh, that in not just him, but uh, most fighters of this era are those kind of Fritzy Zivic types that are going to come in and like rough the shit not out real. of you yes. and, you know, beat you up. They might not win. In fact, they'll probably lose, but they're going to make you look like absolute shit. And you're going to have to fight them like four times before you get, before you reach the title, you know, and that doesn't happen these days, but. Shout out Agapito Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't go far that far back for sure. They these guys do exist because but... he, he literally was the. I mean, not to go too far off, but he was literally the epitome of that. Watch this fight with Pacquiao. All right, where Sanchez Manny you know, he wanted was, out. Yeah, all right. Did not give a fuck. Wasn't worried about that left hand. Didn't care about nothing. A guy that had been in there with everybody and everything had seen everything. It was dirty as shit. Did <laughs> it just went into Pacquiao's grill and just that was like, all right, I'm going to headbutt you. I'm going to low blow you and just rough you the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Manny was like, we ahead. We, we got you. Like, let's get out of here. Let's yeah, go like, home. Let's get the fuck out of here. Those are the type of dudes that are just like off of the fight. Like my Donna would have been fine with Crawford because my Donna didn't give a shit. Totally. And he was strong enough and he definitely would have like, you know, made Crawford put onto another level. Look, Crawford would be, but like that would have been a fun fight. You know what I mean? Because yeah. somebody's going to take a little yeah. out of you. Yeah. Absolutely. Like um like our cell did with Durant, for instance, right? And they knew in the first Leonard fight, we're not gonna sit there and box him and try to stay back and be a counter puncher. We're gonna fight this guy. Like he already got under his skin to begin with, so we know Leonard's gonna, you know, open up a little bit more than he normally would. And yeah, you just gotta go there and be the boss, dominate him, push him across the ring and just really get in his ass. That's what you have to do with a guy like Crawford, like Gamboa, for instance, that was, you know, throwing with him and sometimes landing or whatever if you try to sit there and try to watch him and try to box with him and think with him he's gonna beat you and he's gonna beat you badly because you can't outthink a guy like Kevin Crawford he already knows what he's doing three he's already three steps ahead of you and whatever you do you're just gonna fall into his traps and you're gonna fall into his ways um there, there's you know there's other ways to go about it but I'm not sure if there's anybody out there in this generation whether it be junior middleweight welterweight um that can do that was it that's capable of doing that there's amazing fighters right now. I would love to see him fight Boots, even though I have a favorite Crawford, but I think that would be a hell of a fight. Um, if he moved up to junior middleweight, besides the Charlo fight, uh, Tim Zoo would be fun, even though I favor again Crawford. And clearly there's other, you know, junior middleweights out there too. So, like, there's options. There are quite a few options, and especially now, you know, this is, like you said earlier, this is the position that Terrence Crawford wanted to find himself in. Yes. He he had been 
I mean, you said earlier, you know, we we all had been kind of laughing at him gambling on himself, you know, and saying, look at this fucking guy. He's gambling and he's looking like an idiot. You know, he, he looks great in the ring. He's I got these accomplishments, but he's missing the big fights now. He's missing these defining moments. And now he's this is the opportunity he had been waiting for. He had gambled on himself for got it, made the best of it, made the really best of it. And uh, now he's in the position where he can call a lot more shots. I think they had mentioned on the broadcast that if Errol Spence decides to exercise the rematch clause, then it's Terrence Crawford who gets to decide what weight it's at. Like the winner gets to decide where it's at, but the loser gets to decide whether it happens. I think they were saying, <clears throat> I don't know if that's true. That's, I mean, that sounds like a decent compromise or whatever, but um, so I don't know. I, I, like I said, if I'm advising Spence, I'd say, Pump the brakes, dude. Because if we can, re- if we could exercise this rematch clause like for a year or something, like let's take a break and fucking do that. But regardless, uh, you know, he, there are a lot more options for Terrence Crawford. If especially if Spence doesn't take that immediate rematch, there are a lot more fighters who are going to be popping out of the woodwork and saying, "Hey, I've always wanted to fight him." You know what do you mean? I never got offered that fight. They're going to be there's going to be fighters, you know, popping out to say that type of shit now, but. Yeah, he's in a, the position he wanted, and it it was a truly amazing performance, bro. Like, yeah, uh, like Crawford almost gives me like a, an air of Marvin Hagler now, right? In the sense that a guy that like Pat, you know, you get it. He's been fighting for respect. Like he, I mean, Hagler was really had to grind his gears to get to to get where he was going to make all those defenses and all that. But like Crawford is similar. Like he's been fighting. You knew he was great. You knew he was probably one of the best, and if not the best, but like he was just waiting for that opportunity to get that one chance to like show everybody, yes, I am gonna be, you know, that guy. And um, you know, he didn't have to get a, he didn't have to have like a setback like Hagler did, getting robbed in that draw with a Defermo and being, you know, held back a little bit. But it was almost different in the sense that like he was being held back by Aram and under and undermined him that way, saying, oh, he's unpromotable, so let me just put him on ESPN against. This guy and that guy, Kel Brook, Mean Machine, this one, that one. Not bad fights, but at the same time, they're not the fights that you want to see him in, and it's not the fights worthy of his skill level, you know? And and, and, how, and how often is it that you get those level of fighters where they're yeah. being given, like, you know, good paydays for these kind of mid-level guys? Mm-hmm. And it's not – it almost seems like these days it's not that often where they're like, no, fuck that. I want that fight, you know what I'm saying? And Terrence Crawford was doing that. And it's tough, though, because, like, dudes like Chavez, for instance, or James Tony back in the day could stay active. They could take, you know, mid-level um, title defenses in between big su- – or even non-title fights in between, like, big super fights and still do it because it was a different era. Crawford was just being fed these mid-level title fights that weren't going to do anything except just pad his record but not really define his legacy, and that's what he was hungry for. Exactly. You know? And he finally got the opportunity, and he was kind of like, man, like, he just took it by the bull by the horns. And, like, you know, when Hagler sliced Alan Minter's face in the ribbons because he was so fed up and so pissed off, and this is, like, finally his chance to show the world, you know, I'm the baddest motherfucker on the planet, Crawford was able to do it, too. And so here we are, man. This is the Crawford era right now, and I'm all for it. (laughs) With all due respect to the dead Alan Minter, you shouldn't have said that shit, bro. You shouldn't have said that shit before the fight, bro, because Hagler had your ass. With all due respect. Tough ass guy, nice guy. When I got a chance to meet him that one time at the Hall of Fame, but uh, yeah, you know, shouldn't have said that shit, bro. Probably not. Just, just, this is what wasn't worth it. And any, yeah. and any other fighter that has made a similar comment over the years, it usually comes back to bite you in the ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yep, yeah, almost whatever, every whatever, inst- whatever race they're talking about, they're not going to lose to. And then we might have to do a show. <laughs> The, yeah. the top boxing racist getting their comeuppance. Comeuppance, yeah, 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 exactly. But usually whenever I ain't going to let so-and-so whoop my ass, they end up getting whooped by so Fireman Jim Flynn twice against Jack Johnson, calling him the N-word mid-fight and then just getting knocked out like two seconds later each time. Sam Layford was the Sam Layford or Jack Johnson? No, it was Jack Johnson. Yeah, and Sam Langford too, when he was probably sure spouting off a bunch of crap before the flag. Yeah, he beat oh. Sam Langford once and then talked shit, and then Sam Langford was like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> and then just fucking wiped his ass out. But exactly, man, those are the type of 
things. You know what I'm interested about Spence though, and we talked about this earlier, is that like, you know, Crawford is at the top of his level. I think for years from now he's gonna, you know, have more memorable performances and define his legacy even more so. Spence is in an interesting position. This was such a bad beating that I'm very curious to see where he's gonna come back from this because that's the type of beating where like it's it can like almost ruin a prime or ruin whatever you still had left in your prime. Um, let's look at Meldrick Taylor, for example. You know, Taylor and Spence were different. Like Spence, I think, had a little bit more miles on him. You know, the car accident and this and that other stuff going on. But like still undefeated, top level guys. Mm-hmm. And the beating that Taylor, that Meldrick Taylor took in that Chavez fight, even though he was winning and it's a controversial stoppage up until this day, um, he was never really the same. Yes, he was able to move up to welterweight. He beat Aaron Davis, um, a very underrated champion and fighter in general, to become a champion again. But if you saw his subsequent fights against like Glenwood Brown, um, Luis Garcia, I think it was, in those title fights that he won, but barely won, getting the shit kicked out of him by Terry Norris, and then getting knocked out by Crisanto Espana, you could just see that like he quite he was you know he was damaged goods, completely damaged goods. And by the time he finally got that rematch with Chavez, even though he had pockets where he was competitive in it, he was just a spent bullet. He had nothing left. And I'm wondering if like Spence might be that same way. Like that was a bad beating that he took in this fight. You saw it physically in his face, everything like that. <laughs> and I told you earlier, I wouldn't be surprised if he can come back and win a strap again. Like guys can do that. You know what I mean? Even if they're at a diminished, if even if they're diminished from what they did, there'll still be levels above like an average champion that happens all over an alphabet title. So yeah. like I can see Spence, you know, regaining a belt at junior middleweight against uh, whatever champion or something like that one day, you know. But if he's going to be put in there against another elite fighter, whether it might be a Charlo this time or this guy or that guy, whoever it might be, even Tim Zhu, well, I, don't, I have no idea. I'm going to be curious to see how he's going to react, if his face is going to be able to hold up to it, if his body in general or his, his, um, his reaction when he gets punched. You know, there's a lot of questions there. These are valid questions, dude. You know, and I know that, um, the, look, I'll just say it semi bluntly. It's been a tough week for a lot of boxing fans who were rooting the other way for People these fighters. That's just the way it goes. That's just how it goes in boxing. Folks who were rooting for, sport. yeah, true. Folks who were rooting for Steph Fulton, they got, they got ripped apart, bro, because no, a new way had a real good night. Folks who were rooting for Errol Spence ripped apart. Terrence Crawford had a real good night. It happens. Oh. Um, but, you know, it, it, these are valid questions as far as, like, and it's not kicking fighters while they're down. Just asking, where do they go from here? What happens? And it was a valid concern of ours going into this fight. Where did the car accident leave Errol Spence? How much damage did that do? Clearly, you know, it looked like... uh He had this, I I think this fight had gotten postponed because of an eye injury or the, you know, the negotiations had gotten postponed because Spence had a, had an eye injury. I was curious at the time, did the eye injury have anything to do with the accident, but it just popped up now or got aggravated. Some folks seem to kind of feel like I was taking shots at Spence by asking that I wasn't, I'm just curious. I don't want to see a damaged guy getting in there fucking injured. And now he can't see in two years. And, you know, Israel Vasquez has, has severe eye problems. You know, wow. I don't want to see a fighter go through that. So these are valid questions, dude. dude and we can go so much back, man. We've talked about different fighters all throughout history that all they need is, you know, uh, some injuries to their eyes and, Sugar Ray Seals, all right, 72 Olympian. Yep. We bring up Marvin Hagler earlier. That was one of Hagler's rivals. Virgil Akins. Virgil Akins. Um, you can go over 100 years back to Pete Herman, the Bantamweight champion. Who knocked Gypsy out Joe Harris. Harris. Gypsy Joe Harris. Um, There's one off the top of my head right now. I'm trying to think. Uh, Sam yeah. Lankford had fucking, yes. you know, like the Coke Lankford. bottle glasses for a long time and couldn't see. Oh, you know? Yeah, 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 totally. A lot of, the, a lot of these guys, man, they... Oh, and um, the welterweight there that was that was popular, Sugar George Costner. Mm, yep. So I you know it's worth noting because I I love this story. He goes blind after his career ended, and he ended up graduating college, which is pretty awesome. You know, like and, and we is, 
we talked about this also last week in regard to the gloves with a new way and just, yeah. you know, fighters being able to live lives after being a oh. fighter. And it's the same thing. You know, this is out of concern. We don't want to like, ha ha, you know, we're not pointing. It's like, I don't want to see Errol Spence get the absolute shit kicked out of him to the point where in a couple of years it needs to be taken care of, you know? And so that's the whole point. He's taken some, some degree of damage in the last handful of years between the accident and his boxing career. He really has, man. And he's a good fighter. He's a really, really good fighter. I've enjoyed watching him over the years and all that. I know his career is going to continue, but I'm just, as rightfully so, we're all just kind of a little worried about, you know, to see where it's going to go from here. And I think the Meldrick Taylor comparison is kind of valid for that because that was one of those things. <laughs> some guys can come back from them, some can't. But those are, that's one of those type of beatings where it's like, excuse me, you're like, holy shit, you know, you need a lot yep. of time off. That's a, that's a big recovery. And yeah. I'm a fan of Errol Spence's, and I think he's still, you know, and I think he was an awesome fighter, and I enjoyed watching him. So I really hope that he's going to be able to come back but like, yeah, there was no clear here. villain. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there was oh, no oh. like bad even, guy. Even at the weigh in, right? At the weigh in, yeah, they were shaking the, hands. Like, you know, you're shaking hands, man. Thank you for making this fight. Hey, man, thank each other. We both did this. Like, that was beautiful. They <laughs> were having fun. That was really great to see. You know? Yeah, there wasn't like, you know, fuck, fuck you, fuck you. You know, there was, and I mean, yeah. whatever. That shit's fine too. I have no problem with it. That's just, that's but, just the fans now that are really mad because, you know, whatever side they're on. But speaking of, I actually wanted to get you, I wanted to get this on you because like people have been talking on Twitter or just online in general that like everyone's saying, hey man, you know, clearly you've never seen a, your favorite fight or lose before. Like, blah, 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 blah. What was the fight for you? Oh man, that's like, a good if you question. Had to say, if you really had a meltdown, you're just like, damn, the first time you're just like, oh no, stick a gut, you know, stick a knife in my heart. <laughs> that's a good question, dude. Um, I mean, I, uh, Clearly, you right. won't have a meltdown on Twitter, but like you had a meltdown. Yeah, anywhere. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, this is like semi embarrassing because you know, especially like in retrospect, and the fact that he's just kind of fucking cringe and embarrassing now in present day. Sure. But um, when when Felix Trinidad fought Fernando Vargas, I was like not a huge Vargas fan, but like I was, I was definitely more a Fernando Vargas fan than like an Oscar De La Hoya fan. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they kind of seem to like, if you were a fan of like Mexican fighters, which I was, you know, from Southern California and I was, and I had a lot of Mexican friends, like, you know, that was kind of like, if you were a fan of Julio Cesar Chavez, you would like kind of more like Fernando Vargas. Yeah, if, for sure. I get that. You know what totally, I'm saying? If you were more like a fan of like, maybe, I don't know, like the Ruelas brothers or something. I'm, try I'm trying to think of a, that's not even a great comparison either, but like, more of a kind of like Chicano. I'm. I don't. I'm not trying to talk shit. Let me ask it's not you a quick place, question. But, you let, know. Let me ask you a quick question. The uh the 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 trunks that Ruelas brothers used to wear. They said Messi car on it. What was that? M e s e c a. Was that like some oh, kind of? To be brand? honest, I don't know. That might have been a brand at the time or something. I, I'm thinking it might have been, but I just remember those specific mm, Gabriel and Raphael wore them. And maybe yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, but that was it. but I mean, and it's kind of it's kind of absurd even to kind of break it down like that to be like either you're a Vargas fan or a De La Hoya fan, but that's how it was a lot of in a lot that's of literally other... how it was. We've talked about that fight, and we've talked about you know where it's polarizing. Oh my god, very so... much. Um, when Vargas was like, you know, De La Hoya kicked snow on me, or whatever. It's a laugh. On me. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's embarrassing in retrospect because I was like rooting for Vargas going into the Trinidad fight. And I didn't hate Trinidad that? or anything, but then like, you know, Fernando got wrecked. And so, I mean, he gave a great account of himself for probably about six rounds straight, but then he just got absolutely Bro, wrecked. I was so pissed off when Tito landed that low blow because oh, that was the first time dude. he pulled that type of shit on somebody. And I was just like, damn it! Because you, you already knew it. it was like a vicious one. It, yeah, well, it the first one was bad. And yeah. they were like, come on, get back in there. And the second one was worse. And, and he, he and they were the like, yeah. 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 Once that second one landed, you saw all the energy from Vargas just sit. I'm like, that was a bad yeah. one, dude. It was honestly like a vicious low blow. But, but I mean, regardless, who, regardless of who I was rooting for, I was kind of, I was a little bummed after that too. I was like, damn, that fool got wrecked real bad. Yeah, man. I mean, that was a really stupid entrance he had too, wasn't it? Remember that? Like he walked through that the the foam cube wall, I think it was. 
dude. Yeah. And I mean, he, yeah, like I said, in retrospect, it's just, he did a lot of shit that was like really fake macho, like puffing himself up type of shit. And yeah. so it's like kind of embarrassing, <laughs> but what, what was yours though? Um, I posted on Twitter earlier. It was, I love Terry Norris as a kid, right? Like I'm, I'll admit I wasn't a fan when Norris had the cool ass high top, you know, slightly sloped to the side. And when he was like, you know, shaving knockout. Yeah. To the back of the yeah. <laughs> when, when he was just annihilating poor souls like Joe Gotti and Brett Lally and, you know, so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah. He went on a mid-level run there for a bit. Oh man. And those fights were featured on HBO. I wonder how they felt like, if Lampley and, and Merch and them saw the belt sheet that day, knowing <laughs> that the main event was going to be Terry Norris against some helpless schleb, they knew they were going to be hitting the bar early that night. Yeah, <laughs> Larry fucking be all, this fight is a fight, but <laughs> this motherfucker would be pissed. Well, I was always a Norris guy. Like, he had an attitude about him. He was, you know, he was a beautiful fighter to watch. I and mean, he was me. Like, he just looked angry all the time he looks so he was pissed a off. good finisher yeah yes he looks so angry the minute he would get you in a corner he was just sitting there just staring at you and you know you just had that feeling you're like man like you know i just knew he was gonna do something nasty to somebody so the first time i saw him was uh beating simon brown in a rematch that was the first fight i watched him live that fight wasn't that exciting but i saw you know because for the revenge the rematches they showed the clip of him losing that first fight so i thought yeah that was he got bonked even pretty good kid. out of nowhere so he just had to get through the rematch exactly even as a kid even though it was kind of boring like i i appreciated what he did and i thought that was cool and um so i'm like all right i'm gonna keep you know i started watching him he's knocking out other dudes i was like wow man he's pretty awesome before i knew it i was totally invested that norris was like one of my favorite fighters and as a kid, you know, we've talked about this. Like, when I got invested into a dude, he was my guy. Like, that was, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I was all in. I to the wheels fall off. And Norris was number one for me. Like, I just loved him. And so when I when the Felix Trinidad fight fell through for whatever reason, and Trinidad knocked out Troy Waters, I was like, okay, fine. Norris is going to fight De La Hoya. I'm with it. Let's do this, you know? And they were going to feature him against Keith Mullins. And I remember Mullins... Again, I'm a young fan, but I'm following enough and watching everything that I know what's going on. And I remember Mullins fighting Raul Marquez and, like, giving him going life and death with him. So I'm like, all right, Marquez ain't, you know, Terry Norris, so I'm not that worried about it. Norris going to beat him pretty easily, and then he's going to go fight Oscar. And <laughs> I'm watching this fight, and I'm seeing Norris winning, and I'm just like, okay, but I'm, like, still sitting there. I'm a 13-year-old kid, and the, Norris is my guy, and I'm just, like, you know, my gloves on, and I'm just like... Let's go, let's go, let's go. And, <laughs> and I'm feeling good. But each round, I see him slowing down. And when he gets hit in that, well, it was like round eight or some shit. Boom, in his right hand. I just remember going, ah! And like, I yelled. I'm just like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, he gets so hard. And I'm just grabbing my head. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And then, like. This isn't happening. This isn't know, happening. Yeah, I'm like, please, God, is this my nightmare right now? Like, you know. Because this wasn't wrestling. Like, I saw, you know, my heroes and Hulk Hogan and other guys get beat up, but I soon realized that was, you know, pre-planned. This was real life now, right? My hero's getting his ass kicked in front of me. <laughs> and, um, then you hear Larry Merch and the asshole. I know Terry Norris, and this is not the Terry Norris I knew. And I'm just like, what? What do you mean? Because <laughs> I don't know what you meant by that. But I'm just like, oh, what, what is he old? Like, what the hell is that? Like, is it an imposter? <laughs> What's happening? Like, I didn't know it washed up. Like I'm still like confused. All the, all these emotions are hitting me at once, and, and then the, it gets stopped. The problem was that, and when Terry Norris got hit like that too, that fool did the Don Flamenco. Yeah, he's like, when it gets stopped, and the poor dude, his head like that, and his mouth is open, and it's like kind of blood jeweling out. And dude, like, <laughs> you know, when you see, all right. And Brent White Height. Remember that little Irish kid when Terry Conklin, the, the kid in the wheelchair? <laughs> that was the same way I just dropped my shit, and I'm just like... <laughs> yeah, he's got the flags. He's just like... Yeah, Ugh. yeah, he just drops. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was me. When I'm just like, I just dropped my gloves. I'm just... The homelessness situation. <laughs> and I just stared ahead, and then my dad stared at me, and I, I just had a meltdown. <laughs> oh, man. Brutal. In retrospect, though, thank God that didn't happen because my man Terry would have got absolutely whooped. 
by Oscar. You know? Yeah, dude. Well, and probably Trinidad too. Trinidad. Yes. Well, it would have been like a firefight, and then Trinidad just decapitates him in like five. But I mean, you know, in the years ahead, like Norris, we've known he's like struggled a little bit, like with um, cognitive issues or whatever. But dude's in incredible shape. He has an amazing wife who keeps him in shape, and kudos to her for that. And um, the times I've met him at the Hall of Fame, it's been a couple of decades I met him. When he got inducted other stuff ah, dude he is such a class act man what's a, what a cool guy terry norris always was just yeah no yeah. i've never heard anybody you know apart from people who have been in the ring with him say anything bad about him you know he's an awful sport to be honest yeah. hitting you while you're down fucking body slamming and shit i but, mean those are the fights too like when he was fighting Luis santana i thought because he just had that meanness to him i didn't know why he punched santana after the belt but i knew like as a kid, I just knew that was bullshit that he got disqualified for that. You yeah, know? yeah. Even I can't remember people, which one it was, but at least one of those, I was like, mm, definitely I, the second one. Well, I think I think it was first the second fight, one. Yeah, because the first one, the first fight, you hit him behind the head. They didn't know what was going on. That was a fiasco. Yeah, and because one of them was kind of like, all right, yeah, that was crazy. But it was a, it might have been the second one where Santana was like, I'm like, bro, get up, yes. get up. I mean, Norris did hit him after the belt. He played. did, but it was like, it was yes, not clearly. what the fool was saying. And I was and like, bro. Thank you for that either. Honestly, like they should have just made it a no contest or something. Straight up. I was like, come on, dude. And then, yeah, it, it, but that was the thing was that he was such, Terry was such like a, you know, fool was like hot. He was, you know, he couldn't he stop so him. All the time. Yeah, he's just mad. He was, you know, high top knockout head face. Dude, it was so cool to watch him. Like, not only like he would still be talking shit after he knocked the guy out. He <laughs> run over and start <laughs> just like a pure heel. And I'm like, that's my dude. Get him, Terry. Like, yes, he doesn't belong in the ring with you. Yell at that scrub. Let him yeah. know he's. You know, you know I mean? and I actually thought there would be a little bit more of that from Terrence Crawford the other night. It looks like there've been a couple clips though, where he's where he's jawing at Charlo ringside. He did. He did. I didn't even see that watching live, so it was kind of it's it's good, I guess, that he got a little bit out. But no, nah, he was super respectful. Uh, you yeah, know, we're that talking fishnet that he was wearing, bro, too. The main, the, <laughs> you know, the big oh. fish or whatever. And, and I do have to admit, dude, it's pretty fucking hilarious. Like, as soon as he won, his mom, his sisters got up in the they ring and they're just fucking sitting yeah. there. I was like, man, because Derek James said, What there's gonna be no dancing after the fight. <laughs> And there was. Wait, come on. What are you? Was this some high school graduation? You're the fucking police officer telling to come on. There was dancing. They were yeah, getting was... down like I was getting down at my high school reunion a few hours <laughs> earlier. <laughs> 20 years, baby. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. But no, no, man. That was, listen, Crawford is a generational talent. I don't. For sure. It's it's tough to. It's easy. All right. I don't want to say it's tough. It's easy. That's That's a better word. It's easy to put someone like that, especially immediately after a fight when you're so wound up and you're so just like oh my god it's easy to put him on a pedestal saying yes he's one of the greatest of all time i'm gonna put him in the top whatever all right nah it, i get that i do it too sometimes we're all guilty of doing that you know what i mean i think we were texting each other probably saying that same shit but you got to take like a couple of days to digest what you watch what you witness and then try to put like proper context to it you know what i mean and sure. that being said Crawford is still like an all time great. Like he's still he's still looking like a potential all time great. <laughs> all he that honestly is. Yeah, like it's yeah. He's he's the complete package. Like, um, you know, it's one of those talents. Like Mayweather was a complete package and what he did and all that stuff. But Mayweather also too, you have to put it in perspective. Like he still was picking and choosing a lot of things as his career was going on. Mm -hmm. yes he's all-time great yes he's won the you know talent wise whatever you want. but like there was a science to what he was doing in terms of opponents and all that stuff i get like more like i said the not to repeat myself again but i get more of a hag of aspect with crawford where he's just hunting for respect he's just hunting for you know that that next dude that's going to add more to his legacy you know what i mean yeah and like the way he was hunting for Pacquiao back in the day, the dude was literally just begging for it, almost on his knees. And yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't be more happier for him because now he's finally attained what he's wanted to. And I certainly hope that he doesn't have one of those Hagler endings where 
it's like a controversial decision where he finally gets knocked off his perch and he's so pissed off about it that he disappears. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm not really sure what's what realistically is there for him at 147 pounds. So we talked about this on the preview show where we talked about a guy like Hagler or Hopkins where they reign at that weight for a while. Um, you know, I, I don't know that it's the kind of division right now where he, where he really could reign at 147 pounds, but you know, there's room, dude, there's room to accomplish a lot more, even just with what he's accomplished. Now, this fight alone does a lot for him in terms of defining a legacy. Um, and so I 100% agree generational talent and, you know, again, not to take away from what Crawford did, but what amazing week, dude, what an amazing week that we got to see, uh, two kinds of like top level fighters like Noia Nui and Terrence Crawford operate on that level against, you know, yes, Ter uh, Errol Spence was a clear level above stiff Steph Fulton, in my opinion, but nonetheless, they're both top level fighters and they both got totally outclassed by yes. guys who were a level above them, which is amazing, you know, just to see that level of fighting twice in a week. We're super I mean, a little spoiled. It's, it's very spoiled when you have two generational talents like that active at the same time. That's incredible. That really, really is, man. And I'm, we're blessed to be able to say we're boxing fans during that era. Like, and New Way put on that type of performance. Yeah. I, had, I, had, I was convinced neither Crawford or Spence was going to be able to uh, replicate that. And Crawford not only replicated that, but he might have surpassed that. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, did it. Yeah, he did it. It's wild. Yeah. Because I don't think either one of us thought that could have been possible to do that. And look where yeah. we're at now, man. And that's 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 what I love about the sport is that like yeah. we have that type of talent. Like that that type of genius is scary. That's a genius. That's not just like you know physical talent like Roy Jones had, or like you know type of thing where it's just natural athletic ability where you're able to pull these things off. No, like there's the, there's all this thinking involved in the way it comes in. That's just amazing. And yeah. Guys like in a way in in um, Crawford, they're different from Roy because Roy would put on that those generational performances like against James Tony and others. But you would see like it was just mostly like the reflexes, like the leaping hooks, the stuff he would do and staying there. <laughs> like you knew that was just him being fast in his legs and just being athletic the way he was. Guys like Crawford and in a way. The way they've been breaking down their opponents, the way, you know, like in a way broke down um, Stephen Fulton with his jab to the body, got the body going, finish it. The way he just did that entire fight until the conclusive finish was absolute brilliance and of, a, of a thinking guy that just didn't, you know what I mean? And same thing with Crawford. It's like there's so much that that's just old school. All right. Yeah. Where are those old school fans that like talk about, you know, yeah, back in my day, blah, blah, blah. Yes. These guys could compete in any fucking era, any time, any place, if not be a champion. No question whatsoever. Like, these are generational talents. These are all-time greats. Mm -hmm. And enjoy them while you can. And when they retire, if you have kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, whatever you have, people, some somebody to talk to. I don't know, man. Bum on the street talking you know, on the bench. Tell them about these greats. <laughs> you know I, said I, mean? it, I said it last week. I'll repeat it again, just in case anybody needs to hear it or didn't get it the first time. I've said it on social media too. If you're one of the people, one of the writers or whatever, who's gone around in the last month or two whining about how boxing's not coming together, not giving us what we want, hasn't been a good year, it's dying, it's not doing well, pull yourself together. Just pull yourself together. Look, uh, I'm the one of the most curmudgeon ass motherfuckers on the face of the planet. I'm a grumpy jerk. And if something I can seize on that I don't like, I will do it. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Okay. We've gotten what we wanted this year. And it's the year's not even over. You know, we're we're only fucking the seventh month of the year is about to be completed. We still got five months left, dude. We got time. This shit is about to be fucking lit. Did that sound oh. fucking just awful? Or yes, it did. Of course it did. It's <laughs> gonna be it's gonna be litty. All right. It's gonna be great. Yeah. I'm hyped. I'm hyped, man. For it's sure. good time to be a boxing fan right now. It really is. And it really is. If you're, if you're mad about your favorite fighter losing or whatever, just kind of get over it. This is the sport that you're gonna live in. Your favorite fighter is gonna lose. It's gonna happen more than once and they put themselves out there it's gonna happen they really, should really be happy that they have the courage to put themselves out there like that just be happy that this fight got made in yep. a sport 
where all the 99% of the time we're complaining about the fights that don't get made or X, Y, and Z is ducking this one and promotional entities and all this other bullshit. And here we are. Here we are. We had this fight get made. We had Tank Ryan get made. We had all these other different fights get made earlier, like big, big fights. Yeah, several and, fights in a row where people were like, that fight will not get made, and it got made. And it got made. And who knows what we still have going on already. Yeah, the heavyweight division, the glamour division is shambles right now because Tyson gives a shit. Yeah, who cares a shit? Yes. But who cares, all right? Boxing is thriving everywhere else. And just enjoy it for what it is because I sure as hell am. I know you are and the real fans that are out there are just enjoying it too, man. And I'm enjoying the talent that I can watch. Like, hell yeah. Crawford is, is an amazing, musty Hall of Famer that, like, I'm enjoying just watching the process of this because that was incredible. That was yep. one of those awe inspiring performances that you're just going to sit there and years from now, even if it was because it was so one sided, it was like, you know, not you can't consider it a fight of the year or nothing like that. But anytime from now on, whether it's like you do show instruction videos or just highlights or whatever it's going to be, you're going to be like, watch this shit. Yeah, if, yeah. That, if that didn't get your blood pumping this week, then I don't know what to, it's not the sport for you. It's not the yeah, sport yeah, for yeah. you. And that's okay, but it's it's a sport for us. <laughs> it's a sport Watch for us. <laughs> Amen, dude. I appreciate you coming on and uh, doing a recap of this fight. I mean, it was super easy because it was like you said, it was an inspiring performance, so it wasn't difficult to talk about whatsoever. But I appreciate it, man, for sure. Absolutely, it's a lot of fun as always, man. And, uh, uh, talk yeah, about man. a generational talent. You don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> You know, everybody who listened in on this podcast, thank you so much. Whatever podcast app you subscribed to or listened in on, we appreciate it. But go ahead and if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a rating. We appreciate that. If you watched on YouTube, thanks again. Subscribe, leave a comment, try to reply to that and whatnot. But social media goes. We are on Twitter. Not saying it, not even doing it. My boy, Eris Pina, is on there as Punch Zone Eris. I'm there as patrick m connor the knuckles and glows podcast is also on facebook and instagram so check us out there but eris we'll talk soon bro what a pleasure man be good everyone later everybody